Several years ago, I learned about Tuxedo OS. I wanted to try it out. At the moment, it was bundled with the Tuxedo hardware. Until recently, they finally released the ISO for everyone to download. Let's look at how good it is. There are two things I found interesting on its website. First, all the links in this page do not have a way back. They all go back to Tuxedo's product homepage, even though I reached them from the OS webpage. And second, all the links go to German page by default. I have to change them to English every time. But these are not the huge blockers for me to find the ISO file. And after downloading the ISO, I boot it up using Ventoy. Inside the live environment, I can see the setup program popped up with a language option, which is set to Deutsch by default. As the system is made there, it makes sense. But after switching it to English, the other settings remain in German. Given I have to use an external machine to record this installing process using HDMI, I had to guess which option can mirror the screen based on the icon. After that, I immediately tried to change the language for other settings like Wi-Fi menu. I found there's no way to get into the system settings as there is no application menu at the moment. This icon in the system bar can only minimize and maximize the setup window. Eventually, I was able to go into the system settings by clicking the settings icon in the system tray pop-up. But the language change requires a reboot, which I know will not be helpful to keep the change in a live CD. Another issue is I couldn't find a way to restore the setup window to its original size after maximizing. Also, the default region of the installer was set to Berlin, which made me take extra attention on keyboard setting, and that is correctly set to English. To my surprise, after clicking the next button, it goes to the live system. Oh, that's why it didn't allow me to go to the settings before, because it was the setup for the live environment, not for the system install program. Interesting design. Now I can see everything in English. So let's proceed with the actual installation. Right off the bat, there are several warnings. The first one is there will be limitations for tools they provide on non-tuxedo device. Well, let's see how limited it will be. The next warning asks me if I want to erase my disk and encrypt the new system. I click no here because it won't be my daily driver. After that, the installation is pretty similar to other distributions. I still got the chance to erase the entire disk and encrypt the system here. I changed the disk type to ButterFS just to see if I can stretch the system a little. The installation started at 9.18 in the morning and finished at 9.22, which took me around 4 minutes. And according to his wiki, I shouldn't worry about NVIDIA proprietary driver because it will be automatically installed if it detects one. So let's reboot the system and see if it operates properly. Hmm, they do have a pretty grub menu, and I notice it is in English, not in Deutsch. And even though it is using KDE Plasma by default like NixOS, it does have the proper NVIDIA installation behind the scene. I can boot it up without any issue with HDMI plugin, and I saw the NVIDIA driver working out of the box. Another note is that it is using X11, and I can't find Wayland installed by default. Given Plasma Wayland performs much better on NixOS, let me install it first. Huh, black screen. Only the mouse was able to move. I found their official page about the issue. They shipped X11 because they're facing the same issue with hybrid laptops equipped with dual GPUs. Well, good to know. Let's go back to X11 then. First, I was trying to see what Tuxedo tools can do. In the Tuxedo control center, I can see the CPU frequency, but not temperature or fan RPM. However, I was able to add this information using the widget called System Monitor instead. As for the profiles, I had no issues switching between them. Not sure if it actually works, 
but let's test it out with the gaming benchmark later. It also contains other user-friendly tools like shutdown timer and keyboard backlight, which is not compatible with non-tuxedo device either. But I was still able to turn on the keyboard light using my keyboard shortcut. Next, I ran the Tom program, which seems like a driver manager for Tuxedo OS, but got incompatible error. Well, with the NVIDIA proprietary driver working out of the box, I don't think I miss any major functionalities on my third-party laptop. Finally, I give it a read to their kernel patch doc. Very impressive to see that they have some fixes for the latest 13th gen Intel CPU. Looks like this distribution might be more future-proof than the vanilla Ubuntu. Let's install games now. I'm glad to see this is another Ubuntu-based distribution with Flatpak installed by default, but no Snap. For simplicity, I install Steam and Bottles using Flatpak and enable Proton after that. Let's see if the Twig X11 Plasma can match the Pure One on Nix OS with benchmarks. I started with Assassin's Creed Origins. I was wrong about Nix OS needing to catch up. Clearly, the Uplay Now Found error was still an issue on Flatpak version of Steam at the moment when I was recording this video. I had to install Proton Tricks. And a little tip for you. Don't go with the one that's under Valve namespace even though it looks more legit. It has already been deprecated. I ended up using the Moto King one to set up the Ubisoft Connect. Now the benchmark. On Nix OS, we had 83.96 on X11 for the overall frames and 70 FPS as the average. On Tuxedo OS, I ran it twice to make sure since it was too low for the first time. It gave me 78.22 for overall frames and 65 on average and a lot of glitches, way lower than the score on Nix OS. And the second time, it is even worse. I got 67.95 as the overall and 57 as the average. I realized I was using the Tuxedo default profile in the control center, which is not the full performance mode. So I changed the profile to the default and ran it again. The difference is night and day. I got 86, 89, and 73 on average, which is even better than the vanilla Wayland Plasma score I got on Nix OS. Nice job, Tuxedo team, on the tuning work. This is the first time I see X11 beating the Wayland score and now I believe those profiles in the control center actually work for the third-party hardware. And they work really well. Then I started Tomb Raider. This game gave me a constant of 100 FPS on average using X11 on Nix OS, with the max refresh rate set to 60 Hz. In Tuxedo Performance Mode, I used the same refresh rate on Ultra and I got 69.2 for minimum, 122.8 for maximum, and 102 on average. Similar result, but worse minimum FPS. Still playable. With this learning, let's take a look at Red Dead Redemption 2. Before this video, the game was running in a bottle with GE Proton configured, and on Nix OS Plasma X11, I got 93 for the maximum, 21.75 for the minimum, and average of 45.92. On Tuxedo, I just couldn't start it in bottles, so I switched to Lutris. I'm not sure if it is due to the performance mode or due to the launcher. With the same G Proton Runner, it gave me a similar minimum of 21.14, a lower maximum of 77.7, .7, but a way better average of 52.73. I checked the settings several times to make sure it is identical to the test I run on X, and it is. So I would say it makes sense to use the performance mode default profile on Tuxedo OS with X11 if you want to game on it. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.